and a warm welcome to all the dignitaries our all the dignitaries our remote resource person and participants i am mr shilpa shree physical education director of ab shetty memorial institute of dental sciences located in the university mangalore i hope you all are doing good and uh, today we discuss something about the most relevant issue in the way of covid-19 health and physical fitness is one of the major aspects in order to keep our self fit and fine for the fact that it is one of the aspects that we can never leave aside this is a single day webinar organized by physical education department ab shetty memorial institute of dental sciences located in the university in collaboration with physical education Foundation of India Karnataka chapter on topic confidence rebuilding in sportsmen through physical fitness and stress management during COVID-19 pandemic. Now I would like to request Professor Dr. Rahul Bandari, Sports Advisor, Abhishek Memorial Institute of Dental Sciences, Uttar Pradesh University, to deliver the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shilpa. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the webinar on. Uh, confidence rebuilding in sportsmen through physical fitness and stress management uh, during covid times i welcome all the delegates and participants and we are delighted to have our uh, vice chancellor professor dr satish kumar bandari uh, from nitty dim to be university to uh, who will be giving the presidential address uh, we are also amidst the presence of dr us krishnan ayer who is uh, also a great sports enthusiast i welcome our vice chancellor and our dean and principal of abc dental college thank you sir for taking your time out i would also like to welcome uh, shri shrikant secretary of the uh, pefi karnataka he has taken great efforts in organizing this webinar thank you sir i also welcome uh, dr murli krishna who is the backbone of all sporting activities in uh, ritay university uh, last but not the least our uh, resource people for the day uh, dr soni john and uh, dr abhishek shetty uh, welcome you all for this uh, webinar and i hope it will be quite an interactive one the primary objective of this webinar is to address the issues uh, uh, basically to instill confidence in sportsmen and uh, prepare preventive strategies and protocols to be followed by sportsmen so that the healthcare system does not collapse now i hope all these issues shall be uh, regarded in this uh, uh, webinar uh, i'll quickly uh, run through the uh, introduction of dr soni john who is an associate professor in christ college trishu uh, dr soni did his mphil in physical education and he is also a phd in sports psychology uh, he has had several research awards to his achievements and has a teaching experience he is also taught motor development and cricket uh, for b ed physical education at victoria university melbourne he is a sports psychologist for kerala state teams in athletics archery women volleyball rowing swimming and kabaddi and was a part of the 20 uh, gold medals that uh, the kerala had won during the national games in 2015 he is also trained uh, several international athletes uh he is also associated with uh, hector vincent who is the double olympic gold medalist uh, from cuba he, uh, he has held several positions in uh, various professional bodies uh, i am glad to know that he is the south indian regional secretary of sports psychology association of india from 2012 to 15 and he is a member of the technical team of the kerala cricket association we welcome you wholeheartedly sir and uh, we welcome once again for this program our webinar uh, i also welcome dr abhishek shetty a uh, young uh, uh, sports enthusiast i heard is a very good football player he is associate uh, did with uh, enapaya medical college as an associate professor he also is a team doctor for fc mangalore and uh, for fc bangalore and a former team doctor for indian national team for russian Uh, for, for russia world cup qualifiers now uh, welcome abhishek to this uh, webinar uh and hope we have a very fruitful session uh, now i would request our vice chancellor professor dr 
Satish Kumar Bhandari to give the presidential address, please. Thank you. Uh, Abhishek. Uh, guest for the day, the Dean of the Abhishek Institute of Dental Sciences, Dr. Kishan Nayak and uh, Sri Srikanth, the Secretary of uh, Physical Education Foundation of India, uh, very renowned uh, uh, or resource person, Dr. Sony John, Associate Professor of uh, Christ College, Irinjalakkuda, Dr. Abhishek Shetty, our own, from the neighboring college, uh, Professor of uh, Orthopedics, NFI Medical College, uh, Professor Rahul Bandari and uh, Professor Dr. Murali Krishna from uh, KSIDA Medical Academy uh, and all the sports enthusiasts and the organizing secretary, very dynamic, uh, Shilpa Shri, the physical education director of MIT of Dental Sciences. It gives me immense pleasure to be part of this uh, inaugural function of this very unique uh, webinar conducted by A.B. Shetty, a Memorial Institute of Dental Sciences, in collaboration with the Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka chapter. Uh, it's a very unique, as uh, Rahul said, because uh, the fitness of the sports people is very, very important. As you all know, we are going through very unprecedented crisis, uh, probably, uh, for the last, for the one, this century is one of the very unprecedented, and his life, uh, the life is become standstill. Sports and sportsmen are not uh, exception to this. I think they are the most uh, affected people. You see that most of the sports activities in the country has been stopped. Now even the IPL match has been shifted to the uh, Middle East countries, and uh, we are watching it uh, without spectators. So that the enthusiasm and the involvement is very, very less when there is no crowd. Still, we are having this sort of activity which it should be appreciated. When you talk about the COVID uh, conditions, the most vulnerable who have been affected by this are the senior citizens of the country because they have been asked to stay indoor and majority of them are suffering from comorbid conditions, particularly arthritis, movement disorders, diabetes, and hypertension. And the people who are in urban area, there's again one very uh, section, particularly the elderly people in the urban area also have been affected by this uh, COVID situation. And uh, fitness has taken the toll in this uh, uh, very unprecedented crisis. As you all know, people may ask, what is the importance of uh, physical fitness? You know that uh, there is, Studies have shown that uh, exercise has got impact on the functioning of the immune system. Each bout of exercise mobilizes uh, the bil billions of immune cells which are capable of carrying out uh, effective function, recognition and killing of virus infected cells. This has been proved by studies. Even though it's, this experiment has been not done by in uh, COVID patients, a lot of viral diseases we see that physical fitness uh, improves the condition and it prevents the condition. It may be true in COVID also. We have to keep the physical fitness to prevent COVID, also to get rid of the COVID condition early, as early as possible. And the only way is keeping physical fitness. As you know, there is no cure for COVID. Only treatment is physical fitness and uh, some nutrition elements, like they are trying zinc and other supplement, nutrition supplements, and rest of the things are all empirical. Whatever we give is empirical. So best way is to prevent COVID condition. So physical fitness is very, very important. But unfortunately, because of the social distancing and other mask, wearing mask, this has become a bit difficult. But there are ways, I think there are the resource functions are going to discuss all these issues how we can maintain the social distancing with all the precautions, how we can keep the physical fitness and how we can participate in sports. And as you all know, COVID is not going to disappear immediately. It's going to live with us. It may 
continue till 21 or even 22 people say but how to cope with this not uh, uh, leaving with cope, uh, covid it is coping with the covid we have to cope with the covid and so we have to carry on so i congratulate the abct institute of dental sciences for con uh, conducting this very interesting webinar particularly i think nobody has conducted uh, this type of webinar probably first time on the in the state i congratulate the abc institute of dental sciences uh, conducting this webinar uh, with the in collaboration with physical education foundation of india i, I congratulate uh, uh, shri shrikant because i heard him uh, speaking in the beginning very dynamic uh, uh, secretary of uh, P pfi karnataka chapter i congratulate him for conducting the this webinar and uh, uh, coming to this particular theme of this webinar is very relevant because all sports activities in the university most of the universities have stopped uh, including our university other day our uh, sports secretary uh, murali and uh, pd came and asked me when to start the sports activity in the campus but because of the uncertainty in the camp, uh, campus uh, because of the covid and uncertainty about the decision makers the policy makers have not given guidelines even though a lot of things have started outside unfortunately sports has been not given green signal i presume that from 15th onwards from today onwards things will improve uh, we are going to start the activities in the campus particularly our gymnasium uh, we are going to start and indoor sports with the, all the precautions like social distancing and uh, personal hygiene we are going to start the sports activity in the campus and uh, particularly this seminar is very relevant because when we are going to start the activities we have got the responsibility of maintaining uh, social distancing and uh, all the precautions uh, laid down by the uh, government i hope this webinar will enlighten the people who are participating uh, not only from outside from the inside the campus who are participating in this webinar and they will have a very interactive session they will carry very pleasant memories of this webinar and it will help us in uh, starting the sports activities in the campus in a staggered manner and but only my sincere hope that uh, you will maintain the discipline and you will maintain the social distancing you will wear uh, and uh, as far as possible the people with the uh, uh, fever or any evidence of infection should remain out uh, should not participate in activities so self discipline is also very important so that you will will not give infection to others and protect yourself also as i said in the beginning covid is going to continue but stay healthy and stay safe by maintaining physical fitness and also all the precautions wish you all the best may god bless you over to inspirational words sir. and uh, finding time for our invitation even in your busy schedule thank you so much sir thank you thank you okay now i request professor dr us nai dean and principal abishati memorial institute of dental sciences located into the university who is a backbone of all the sports activities organized by the physical education department absmidl to deliver the inaugural address uh thank you very much uh Mr. Shilpa, most respected uh, and revered chief guest and president of today's function, none other than our own most beloved uh, vice chancellor, Professor Dr. Satish Pandari, sir, the guest faculty, Dr. Sony John and Dr. Abhishek Shetty, Professor Dr. Rahul Bandari, the staff uh, advisor for the sports at ABSM IDS and of course the organizing secretary Shilpa Shri and not to forget the most dynamic uh, secretary of the PEFI Karnataka C. Srikanth he had joined us earlier and I'm sure he's uh, with us, he is logged in all the other participants ladies and gentlemen I should uh, 
first of all congratulate professor dr rao bandari and uh, mrs shilpa shri for coming up with this idea of organizing this very 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 unique i should say uh, workshop or webinar on confidence building in sports persons through physical fitness and stress management there are two components of it during covid pandemic both are most important and the need of the hour and as rightly said physical fitness our uh, has already been highlighted by our uh, uh, dear vice chancellor and how it is important to fight or stay fit or uh, keep the corona virus and many other diseases away during this times the you know sports activities have come to a standstill today incidentally the pools are opening and of course uh, the theaters are opening what is relevant in the sports is that the swimming pools are opening for general public but under all these things uh, like every other profession i am sure the sports persons also have a feeling the stress of the situation so this has caused a lot of stress because of your tight to your house and so many other things so many people have been laid out of the jobs and things like that so i'm sure rather than not just sports person i understand out of the 1430 a large number at that people who have registered for this webinar there are people of every walk of life not just sports persons there are students teachers and others who have logged in and registered for this workshop i will not take much more of a time and sound too repetitive but if i i'll be failing in my duty if i do not thank the people involved in this workshop though it is not my let's say uh what is a uh, assignment to be thanking people but as the chair principal of the institution i would be failing in my duty if i do not mention a couple of names first of all that comes to mind is professor dr rahul rahul thank you very much for organizing this workshop uh, not to forget mrs shilpa shri this is a first major program that we are having after mrs shilpa shri has joined our institution immediately after she joined we had this uh, covid coming in and uh, all the other physical activities uh, could not be held in fact our sports day had to be postponed or cancelled all the other sports events had to be cancelled so this is a, one of the major events or the first major events we are having under her organization skills as this physical education director of our institution i would also like to thank our uh, resource persons who i already mentioned dr soni and dr abhishek for sparing the valuable time and uh, spending time with us and consenting to address this webinar well last but not the least most importantly i would like to thank professor dr satish kumar bandari sir sir we are really honored by your presence here today your presence means a lot to us and thank you for all your encouragement not only for this webinar but for every other activity that we take up at this college sir himself is a very uh, is a sports enthusiast and as i said rahul has already said that uh, you know we know him from very close quarters and how he follows the various sports like tennis cricket especially or probably many more even the local sports like kabaddi and all that we know that sir is a very uh, enthusiastic at all this not just that all the other activities also sir is very supportive of all the time sir thank you very much for all the support at different times uh, i'll be also failing in my duty if i do not thank sri shrikant the dynamic secretary of the pfi karnataka for Uh, coordinating this uh, workshop and guiding us in conducting of this workshop i will not take much more of a time i formally declare this uh, webinar 
open. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, for your uh, most support for the sports activities and your motivational words, sir. Thank you so much. Now, we will move on to the first session by uh, Sony, sir. Uh, today, with us, our eminent speaker, Dr. Sony C.S., our Dr. Rahul Bandari Sports Advisor. He has already given uh, introduction about, sir. Now, uh, he will take topic on how to overcome stress during pandemic and over the special reference to sportsmen. Sir, over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Sadish Kumar Bandari, Principal uh, Dr. Krishna Naik, and also Sikha, Honorable Secretary of PEFI Karnataka, and uh, Murali Kumar, uh, and uh, Dr. Rahul Bandari. Uh, so, inauguration is going on. So, I was addressing oh. Dr. Sorry. Sorry. The organizing Sorry. committee. Uh, of course, this is a time of great importance in the human history. There is absolutely no doubt whatsoever on this. It's a pretty much unprecedented situation that we are facing as human beings. Probably we do not know during our revolution our forefathers faced the same scenario, uh, you know, might have happened. Uh, there have been some data regarding the disappearance of Neanderthal species from the uh, earth due to getting, I mean, attributing the reasons with e epidemic and other factors, mainly epidemic. Uh, I shall now start presenting my slides so that you will get a closer look at the material that I'm going to present for you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there are several people glued onto their uh, you know, electronic devices attending this seminar. And I hope that at, at, at the end of this uh, presentation, I would uh, be treated with some uh, you know, um, brainstorming uh, questions from the participants of this seminar. So I start presenting now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hello. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I hope. I hope you can. Uh, I hope you can see the presentation. Is it true? Can someone respond?
become stressed during pandemic? This is a pretty important, I mean, pertinent question that we face in our everyday life these days. How to overcome stress? And we had a very bad time in Kerala and we are facing a very bad time. We have uh, cases soaring to 8,000, 10,000 every day this, uh, these days. And more importantly, uh, from March to June, the Crimes Records Bureau of Kerala recorded about 66 suicides by the children. Of course, the children were not able to take the toll of stress that they had to face during the time of COVID. They couldn't go out, they had to be locked in, locked in the houses, they couldn't meet their friends, they could enjoy their sports, their recreation, they couldn't go to college or school and things like that, you know, that put a lot of stress on these youngsters and there were 66 suicides. And Kerala is quite uh, notorious for, notorious when it comes to actually number of suicides happening in Kerala. So 60, that shows the kind of toll that COVID is making on individuals in terms of psychological pressure on them. Let us see some of those things and we see what is pandemic is all about before going into the stress session. The human being, we, we know that we humans are far better than many other species in this, in this world. There is no doubt about it. We were intelligently better than many other species. We have been uh, striving like anything in this world for a long time now. And this virus, Corona, found a safe adobe in human beings. I don't know where it came from. There are, there are different versions of it. I'm not going into that, but then we know one thing. Uh, this virus is making hell of a time for the human beings. There is no doubt about it. And the human dominance, which, which has been prevalent for a long time, you know, we were ruling this natural like anything, but when it came to something like a virus, which is invisible enemy, we have a lot of weapons. We have uh, stored up weapons like anything and millions of dollars are spent on making weapons, but we are not in a position to counter the, counter the attack by this invisible enemy. Of course, we might be successful in finding a vaccine in the future, but till then we are into a tough time, no doubt about it. Is it revenge of the nature? Nobody knows. People say, some say that this is the revenge of the nature, but I don't think that this is a kind of a revenge of the nature, but we, have, we are into some kind of a trouble that uh, we never witnessed before. We cannot say that this is the revenge of the nature, but then we are into trouble, uh, in, in a kind of a trouble which we never witnessed before. We talk about Spanish flu, which was there, in, uh, there at the beginning of the last century, which caused tremendous amount of deaths, but then we never witnessed it. Actually, I never witnessed it. Probably none of you witnessed it. So we have only known about it through reading and other uh, chronicles of it. But otherwise, this is first time that we are facing such a phenomenon. Life, the most valuable thing in this universe is life. There is no doubt about it. As life is valuable to us, life is also valuable to the virus. You need to understand that. And the virus finds to sustain its life easy inside the human beings. So uh, if, you, if you look at the life, how life came to be, probably there is always a question in science, whether it is environment or heredity, which is more important. We always ask that question when we deal with uh, some kind of uh, uh, phenomenon like uh, life on this universe. Is it heredity that is important or environment? There is no doubt about it. It is environment that is more important because we had conducive environment in Earth that gave birth to life Earth. We have been searching for life in other planets. We never found it. So it is. we need to understand that life is the most valuable thing, which is the contribution of the conducive environment that could produce life on Earth. The probability thing. You know, if you, if you look at your own probability of being here alive, if you look at it, when the ejaculation happens, there are about 100 million sperms, you know, shot into the womb, mother, womb of the mother, you know. And there is only one female egg. So the probability of you being here alive is one out of 100 of million. You need to understand that. That makes 
you and I the most valuable thing in this universe. And we need to understand that why, if we ask a question to ourselves, what are we? There is only one question, you are a unit of life. And virus also, a single virus is also a unit of life, which has got its own uh, life propensities. An entity that can live all by itself. Human beings, we think that we always are proud that we can live all by ourselves. But we need to know that we cannot live all by ourselves. We have to depend on so many other uh, other things in the nature if we want to take our life forward. This we need to understand. There is a mutual dependency that makes the life the most sustainable. If you want to sustain your life, you have to be mutually dependent with many other things in the nature. Of course, you need oxygen. If you want oxygen, the trees and other plants need to give you oxygen to breathe. And if you think that you can live all by yourself, you are living in a fool's paradise. So you need to understand that situation and you need to understand that the, that very situ situation, that very dependency of human beings have made it possible for the virus to take a bird inside human beings because we cannot live all by ourselves. We have to depend on the nature to take the life forward. The pandemic, we know that we already said that it's an un unprecedented situation. The battle for life is you know, getting intensified by every day, the foundation of life and living. We have a life. When we have a life, now the question is about, is of, about living, actually. Now, this has become a fight between life and living. You know, you look at the picture of those people who, who had to suddenly uh, travel from their, uh, you know, uh, cities where they, they were dwelling to their uh, villages back in their own, uh, you know, birthplaces. You know, they had to take an unprecedented journey on the wake of this pandemic. And that was like a fight between life and living. You know, your life, your life is there, but how to take the life forward through living? That's a big question on human beings now. And freezing the human life, the pandemic has frozen the human life quite a bit. Now we are thinking about ways and means to come out of it. That's really good. I heard the Vice Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, speaking about how to start our sporting activity at the university. That's wonderful, really. You know how that's that's the way that you should take life forward. And sports is something that speaks about hope for human beings all the time. Hope for human beings all the time. It is such a peculiar activity where you involve that gives you a space for expressing your uh, you know natural tendencies how did sports came to be actually if you look at it you would know that sports is a product of human evolution it's a product of man's battle for survival man lived as a hunter for a long time he lived on hunting and collecting fruits and fishing and all that and for millions of years for millions of years and which created certain genetic, uh, you know, tendencies in their genetic constitutions, which are still alive. But we can't live on hunting now because we have transformed into civilized human beings. Now, where the hunt is on, the hunt is on on the sports grounds. When you score a goal, when you score a goal into the past of the opposite team, that's like hunting down something. When you take a catch you are killing somebody symbolically. When you are taking a run, you are in, in, engaging into the battlefield of the enemy territory and converting that particular uh, conger into a civilized form of runs. So the life has become so much civilized that we find, we keep the hunting going through sporting fields. That you need to understand. That is the way the sport is related to the human evolution. So we cannot, Think of forgetting sports at any stage of our life because it's a phenomenon that takes human culture forward in a, in a way that cannot be done by any other sector in the human life. Think about other, other art, art forms, they do the same. But sports has got universal rules and regulations, universal language, universal symbols that can transcend the boundaries of different nations. And that is one of the reasons when the World Cup is held, you find so many uh, hoardings of uh, Leo Messi or uh, Cristiano Ronaldo on the 
sides of the national highways, respecting their deeds in the football field. So Leo Messi is not an Indian, he is an Argentine. And Cristiano Ronaldo, not an Indian, he is a Portuguese uh, footballer. But we respect them for their talent, for their deeds on the field. And through that, we transcend the boundaries of nations. That is one quality that sports has. And that is one of the reasons why sports gives so much of hope for humanity. And we cannot really forget sports and take life forward. That is one of the reasons whenever, even if it is pandemic and people find it difficult to take life forward, we have the IPL matches going on in a, diff in a, in a different country, in a venue far away from, but we get glued onto the TV to see our favorite stars uh, are doing heroics on the field. That is because we still have hope in our hearts to take our life forward, even in the case of, even in the background of this pandemic. Okay, it has uh, teared our social fiber like anything. We know that the living, the propensity of life, things like, one of the most important thing about living is movement. If you have life, you have to move. Movement is one of the most important basic qualities of life. That is one of the reasons why we, why we find every living organism move move and uh, we have you know that we have special centers in the brain that are activated when we enjoy uh, you know a living movement you know let it be a kathakali dancer or a chagana or whatever it is when you observe that form of art we get enjoyment when we when we look at it because we have special centers in the brain that are capable of enjoying that kind of physical movements and these are the same centers involved in uh, watching uh, that give you joy when you watch uh, you know Virat Kohli uh, hitting sixes over the robs or Cristiano Ronaldo giving one of the best goals through his powerful headers in the soccer field. So this is pretty important. You need to understand that movement is the center of life. And unfortunately, through lockout, what happened is that that movement is cut down. And our unlearned behavior, like uh, movement is an unlearned behavior because we never learned it. It is, it is inborn and it is cut off. Our unlearned motives are cut off sometimes. But we, we, uh, but we cannot live without food. So we have to search for food. We have to find a means to uh, make both ends meet. We need to have a means of means to find our livelihood. So because it's an unlearned motive, we cannot just uh, simply sit and die. So we find means to survive through. And unlearned needs, our basic needs uh, for food, oxygen, and all that, you know, uh, unlearned drives. There are drives that takes our life forward. Uh, we have a lot of learned drives, like I want to, or take a degree in something like uh, you know management and that is that is an unlearned uh, that's a learned drive that's a learned drive but my life my drive for food is an unlearned one that is by birth I cannot live without food I cannot live without oxygen so this is pretty important this you need to understand this is where sport is important sport is something like an unlearned drive a drive to achieve something a drive to move around i drive to do something that is that will keep the tendency that is set in our genetic constitution tendency for hunting and to dominate right uh, human imagination if you look at human imagination it will be wonderful i mean uh, we know that uh, you know harari the the israel writer who wrote the book homo sapiens speak in volumes about the kind of imagination that humans had. He imagined about money, he created one. He imagined about culture and civilization, he created it. Family, he created it. It's all out of human's imagination. And then education, religions, law, government, and sport as well. And what a powerful imagination human beings have. Probably we are going to survive through this period of strife and struggle merely because we have tremendous capacity in our imagination. We are trying to find out vaccines at different parts of the world. We are trying to, uh, trying to find out evolved ways and uh, means to come out of the uh, trouble, uh, you know, put on us by this virus. 
So we are making use of our imagination and make believe. That is another thing. We have believe we believe that money is pretty important, but in essence, it's only it's only a, a piece of paper. But we have made us to believe that it is valuable. We have added uh, so much of imaginarily. We have added so much of value to money, and we believe. And sport, it is simply you know it's something like if you look at cricket, it's simply a ball and bat game. But when India and Pakistan uh, fight each other, we, we, we are made to believe that there is a battle going on. So uh, human imagination and big, make believe are important things as far as uh, you know, the, the culture of sport is concerned. The challenges, if you look at generally at challenges, there are life's challenges. The call for physical strive is important, but we cannot involve in physical striving because we have very limited scope. We have to find out ways and means to uh, to go out and do physical activities. The vacuum of mind. This is one of the important things now. Very very specific in the case of uh, you know Corona, uh, COVID-19 uh, period of time. We we don't have anything in mind. We do not know what to do next. We are so much disappointed that we cannot go out and do something. You want to you you want to strive, you want to do something, but you cannot do it because your life is in danger. If you do that, you can get infected if you are not careful, right? So that creates a lot of vacuum in your mind, which disturbs you so much and puts a lot of pressure on you, right? Boredom, another one. You have to sit all time home, and you know probably you watch TV for some time, get bored up, then start reading. You board up, and there are different things. Sometimes crazy housewives like my wife, you know, starts experimenting on cooking, and I'm happy about it as much as it doesn't disturb my stomach, you know. So there are there are things that people people want to make use of these times positively, and many of them are making use of time positively. That's really good. I know certain stories, people starting certain, uh, you know, enterprises. Uh, during the time of COVID, using internet and all that, you know, some YouTube channels and all that. And they, they have, some of them have made it really big. There is no doubt about it. But the poor people, they are suffering the most. They cannot go and work. They cannot get something for the, for, uh, for the livelihood. That is where the life stands still, you know. That is where things go every, you know. The governments have limitations. Humans have limitations, but the life has to go on. This is a scenario that that is unprecedented, and we do not know how to overcome it. But we have to find a way. No doubt about it. The after effect of excessive cyber life. That's one uh, thing that creates so much of stress. The after effects of lockdown. We already spoke about it. The near normal. Uh, the counter mechanism. We should respect this man for uh, for the thing that he did to humanity. Ignis Semmelweis is the one who introduced the hand wash, the sanitization, hand, hand sanitization process. He was a Hungarian doctor working in a Vienna hospital where he found infants death was on rise and he identified the cause was because the doctors used uh, infected hands to uh, deal with infants and he advised hand washing but poor fellow was considered uh, a lunatic and he was taken to a lunatic asylum and after admitting to a lunatic asylum in a couple of weeks time he was beaten to death actually but we should respect him he is the one who taught the humanity to sanitize hands actually right the solutions for living there are several solutions keep life active in any possible manner find your dreams and all that we, we will not go deep into this because we we will talk about it later because we are specifically going to sports aspects. Uh, you know, some of the key points for success is observation. You need to observe around, find ways and means to sustain yourself, then experimentation. You need to do some experimentation, see whether it is going right or wrong, then introspect about things that you do, right? We will do all this also in uh, in terms with sports, then creativity is another one which will keep us moving, floating through the stress and sportsmen. What is stress? It is a resultant psychophysical pressure on the organism. Stress is the resultant 
resultant of situation, psychophysical pressure on the organism while responding to a demanding situation. It arises out of a situation. For example, the stress on a sportsman uh, standing on the starting line for 100 meters. It's out of, out of, out of uh, demanding situation. He has to finish the 100 meters. Probably he thinks that he should finish first. And during national games, when we were dealing with athletes, we found that it is extremely difficult to manage the stress aspect. And we devised a strategy where we would tell them that we are not interested in medals. Please be careful. Medal is secondary. What we need is your best performance on the field. If you have been running uh, in 10.6 seconds, I would like you to make it 10.59 seconds. That's enough. That will be a gold medal for you. And if you do that, remember if you do that, you are going to get a medal. But don't think that you will ever get a medal without doing your best. So this, this particular thing can take out the stress about gold medal altogether. Okay, I'll do my best. Let us see. That is the attitude. And it worked for good, actually. We won several gold medals, making the athletes believe that the best performance is the best medal that you're going to get. And we got several gold medals. And they came out with their life best performance, especially in women long jump. I still remember I was dealing with that athlete, and I used an imagery program for her. Imagery program, she was so much... She, she used to do 580 before that and she knew that the coach knew that she could do much better than that and we used imagery and relaxation program uh, she had tremendous confidence in me and i had tremendous confidence in her and the coach we worked as a team and in her first attempt, attempt she covered 6.40 meters and won gold medal in the national games so it is the stress you cannot live, live without stress there is always stress but understanding stress and understanding the optimum stress and feeling the challenging attitude out of that stress, that is the most important thing for sportsmen. Now, if you, if you go to the other things, uh, there are many more conventional forms of stress. One is survival stress. The other one is internal stress. And then environment, from the environmental factors, you get stress. Fatigue and overwork stress, usually that happens with sportsmen. If there is overload, that, that puts a stress on the sportsmen, which can affect their performance. Then there is stress due to lockdown. This is an, this is an unconventional form of stress. It is a stress that arising from uh, your inability to do something, especially sportsmen. They cannot go out and practice. The stadia, stadia are closed, gymnasiums are closed. What are they supposed to do? And this is a stress that arises out of, uh, you know, lockdown. There is out of nothing to do. So how to counter this is an important question here now. How to counter this particular scenario? Uh, some facts about stress. Stress is normal part of life. You need to understand that it is a normal part of life. Every day, everyone will, will face some or the other kind of stress while driving or teaching students or preparing something at home at home or preparing for the presentations or whatever it is, there is stress on it. But see that the stress has got a positive effect rather than negative effect. That is where the key is. Its effects are not always negative, positive. You need to understand that. Stress can be motivating and challenging. That you need to understand. It is not always negative, right? Uh, how to manage stress? The idea is not to eliminate stress. When we think about managing stress, the idea is not to eliminate stress, but to understand optimum level of stress that will motivate the organism to meet the situation with a challenging mentality rather than fear. The attitude that, that stress should give an individual is of challenging rather than fear. If it is fear, your performance is uh, going to be affected by the stress. There will be a, uh, you know, negative effect on that. But if it is a challenging one, that is going to give you a positive effect. That is going to give you a positive effect. So this is where you need to understand the, uh, the optimum level of stress that you need to have. No sportsman can perform without stress. You need to understand that. But optimum level of stress. If the stress is going to be more than optimum level, then that is going to have a negative and that is going to be 
and going to have a debilitating effect on the performance. So you need to understand, you need to look within your introspect and find out what is the level of stress I require to perform. How am I going to control this? There are ways to control it, we'll come to that. Consistently exceeding your optimal level of stress could be dangerous, right? Don't ignore stress. Some, sometimes you feel that ignoring stress is good. No, don't ign ignore it. Identify what you can change about stressful situation. You need to understand what you can do about changing the stressful situation. Apply strategies to reduce the intensity of your emotional reaction to stress. Learn to control your physical reaction to stress. Have regular fitness workouts and develop healthy habits. Maintain emotional ba balance. These are very important for managing stress. Now, uh, choose proper responses to stressful situations. There are different kinds of responses people make towards stressful situations. Drinking, that is negative. Kicking the dog is negative. Drugs is uh, uh, negative, absolutely negative. Exercise, it's a good response. When you have stress, if you can do exercise, it's well and good. Take a walk around. Just do go and do some stretching. That can take away the stress. Hunting and fishing, recreation. Possible? If possible, you should do that. Sleeping, not always advisable, but in some situation it is advisable. Time off from work, of course, if the stress is more, then take leave and go for some kind of a recreation, go for a movie or something. Eating, a lot of eating is not advisable. It, that can have debilitating effect on your fitness and health. Reading is good. Uh, TVs and movies, you can watch TVs and movies, but Try not to get addicted to it. So these are certain ways that you can respond to it, actually stress. Uh, you have to judge yourself. Are you feeling sad or upset? Are you feeling anxious or tense? Do you often lose control, become angry or hostile? Are you feeling tired, fatigued or exhausted? Do you have difficulty sleeping? So uh, this, is, this is pretty important. You need to observe yourself, introspect yourself, try to find out the reasons, try to find out the responses that you make and try to understand what effect the stress has on you this is pretty important because that is the key from where you can start reducing the stress uh, are you having difficulty concentrating sometimes you feel difficulty in concentrating you know if you want to do some kind of a, a activity for example you can't do that activity you can't do that particular exercise because you are stressed do you uh, do you experience butterflies in the stomach that's a sign of the uh, hyper anxiety Right, shortness of breath or digestive problems, this all can be, uh, you know, characteristics of uh, hypertension or excessive stress. If you are experiencing any of these stress symptoms, you need to reduce the stress in your life and or improve your ability to manage stress. Children and stress. I was talking about the suicide cases in Kerala and how the stress played a key role uh, leading to the suicides. Spreading the work, you need to understand certain situations during COVID-19. You know, you have enough time at home, spread the work throughout the academic period, revising the study timetable and timetable again, add variety to study programs to avoid monotony, prioritizing the study, load, focusing on major work and several things that you can do. Uh, impact of stress, loss of well-being, often you lose your fitness, you, 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 you have certain illness, worsening your health, lack of motivation. Sometimes you don't feel like as a sportsman, if you want to do a workout, you don't feel like doing a workout. Inefficiency, uh, emotional imbalance, it can lead to emotional imbalance, loss of weight, over dependence on alcohol, smoking, etc. suicide tendency, all this can happen. Psychological strategies for sustaining performance for sportsmen. This is pretty important uh, in this perspective. One is, one important strategy that we usually use is goal setting in psychology of sports, right? We help individuals to set their goals. We usually, I usually have a tendency to help individuals to set performance goals rather than, uh, you know, uh, winning goals. Winning goals can be uh, troublesome because that can uh, increase the amount of stress putting on an athlete. So. So you, you might have, the athletes would ha always have a set goals for this. They would have had a set goal for this year, but things have gone every now. They cannot think of going to Olympics that is gone and probably it's going to be there in next, their next year. Uh, very doubtful, but next year. So they have to change their goals. They have to reset their goals. They have to uh, have new deadlines. 
and focus on that using performance profiling. Another way that you can involve in uh, maintaining performance, is sustaining performance is using performance profiling. You need to prepare a profile. Write down different aspects of your performance. If you are a long jumper, probably you, you would look at your psychological variables. Your imaginary ability, your ability to set goals and pursue those goals, your ability to keep your psychological mood, mental mood, your ability to keep the relationship with others, make a profile, rate it. Okay, you can give use a rating scale one to 10, then rate it where you are standing. Try to improve upon those psychological parameters. That will keep you involved in performance in a positive way. Even if you cannot go to the ground and do that, if you're involved in a psychological manner uh, towards improving performance, that'll be good. So reset your goals first, then use performance profiling to keep yourself involved, involved in performing. Then developing cognitive awareness. Think about your performance. Think about your performance. Read about the performance variables. Watch videos of top athletes performing in long jump if you're a long jump. And improve your knowledge about that particular activity that you're doing. You know, athletes are doing that right now in my college athletes at home we have given them a package whereby we want them to improve their awareness about their own activity that they are doing you know, they were, we want them to watch videos we send them videos we send them other material to materials to look at to improve their cognitive aspects with relation to sustaining performance okay then uh, imagery Imagery is one particular strategy that you can effectively use. When we talk about imagery, there is a misconception that we, it is just visualization. Visualization is only one part of imagery. You can use any sense modality in imagery. You can right now sitting here, I can imagine hearing Yeshuda singing. So auditory images you can produce. You can also uh, uh, imaginarily smell the best biryani that you're going to have probably. Right. You can also feel the touch of your dear ones on your body through imagination. You can do that. So every sense modality you can use, but predominant sense modality that we usually use during imagery is visual. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Athletes should make use of this particular ability of human beings to do imagery. They can also feel the images, like create the feeling of doing one particular activity, which is much more effective than actually visualizing, you know. And that is one, uh, one strategy that athletes can very well use in order to maintain their performance. And we are right now, uh, we have advised several athletes to involve in imaginary practices and video modeling in order to performance. I made in the performance. When it comes to video modeling, I would like to uh, to quote an example of Joel Batts, the former goalkeeper of French football team. He was the goalkeeper of French team in the 1986 World Cup. And there was a quarterfinal match versus Brazil. And the match was going on a draw. There was a penalty against France. And Seiko was coming to take penalty. And Joel Batts was in the post. Seiko was well known for taking penalty kicks, never failed before. Seiko took the kick, but Joel Bat saved it very pretty easily. After the match, uh, the match went on uh, for a draw, then there was a tiebreaker. During tiebreaker, Seiko scored very easily. Joel Bats couldn't do anything. But France won the match and entered the semifinals. Now, after the match, the journalist asked Bats, what happened? How did you save the sequence penalty so easily during the play time? And why did you, uh, why you couldn't save it during the extra time? The answer was pretty clear. Bats was injured prior to the tournament. He was in the hospital for about uh, six weeks, uh, fracturing his leg. And he said that during my rehabilitation, the one thing that I did was just watching Seiko taking penalty kick and imagining myself saving that penalty kick. Then what happened in the tiebreaker? Seiko is smarter, actually. He changed his way and I couldn't do anything, he answered. So imagery and video modeling are two things 
through two critical things that can keep athletes on the edge of performance. And people are doing that. People are doing that. Many cricketers are using imagery and video modeling to keep themselves close to the performance. And many top athletes, elite athletes are doing it. And there is no reason why uh, other athletes cannot do it. Imagery and video modeling are important. And that, these two activities, are, these two options are probably the best during a time of COVID to keep the athletes and sportsmen on the edge of the performance. Regular fitness at home. I hope our sportsmen uh, are doing regular fitness at home. It's possible. If you say that it is not possible, then uh, you are not in a, uh, you are not motivated enough to do that. If there is a will, there is a way. There is a way. You can go around your house, uh, uh, jogging around, maintaining your fitness. You can uh, do uh, some weight training at home using the dumbbells or your own body weight. You can go for uh, cycling on the road. Uh, taking enough security not to get infected, you know, maintaining is pretty important. And very importantly, interacting with other athletes and coaches is pretty important. You should do that. You should do that. If you sit at home, isolated, you are going to get stressed out. You should find ways and means. You can use internet. One blessing that we have during the uh, Spanish flow at the beginning of last century there was nothing like internet they couldn't contact people if they wanted to contact they had to go and that gave a chance for the virus to spread actually but fortunately for human beings now we have option of internet whereby we can contact others others through internet you should contact your coach you should contact your uh, teammates you should contact other athletes you should contact your sports psychologists discuss with them Get involved in sporting activities. More importantly, more importantly, involving in the family recreation activities. That is where life is already. Life is there in the family. You should involve your family members probably in your fitness workout and be together in the recreation activities at home, which will help you to keep the life going. Right? Yes. So that is the end of my presentation. I do not know whether I exceeded my time because the time given was 40 minutes. I hope I am on time. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your very valuable and very informative presentation in this session on how to overcome stress during pandemic and over with special reference to sportsmen. Thank you. On behalf of ABSM Ideas, Richard Intubi University and Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka chapter, we wish to thank you wholeheartedly and send by our graduates for being the first person for our online program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We will move to the next session, session and uh, participants kindly note that all your questions and queries and why it shall be answered at end of the session. Now the topic, confidence rebuilding among sportsmen through physical fitness management during COVID pandemic. Presentation by Dr. Abhishek Shetty. He is the present team doctor of F FC Mangalore and was the former team doctor of FC Bangalore as well as Indian national team for Russia World Cup qualifiers. Dr. Abhishek Shetty is presently the assistant professor in Department of Orthopedics at NFR Dintabu University. Abhishek sir, over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Silpasri. I Before starting the topic, I would thank uh, Physical Education Foundation of India for giving me this opportunity. I would like to thank uh, my teacher, Professor Satish Bandari, when I was an undergraduate there, Honorable Vice Chancellor now. And also thank uh, principal of AB, AB Shetty Medical College, Dr. Krishna Nair, and uh, Rahul Bandari, as well as uh, Mr. Srikanth for giving me this opportunity to speak. So I will present my slide.
afternoon to everyone. Myself, Dr. Abhishek Shetty, and uh, I'm working as Associate Professor in the Department of Orthopedics in Nanapur Medical College. So, topic for my presentation today is confidence rebuilding in sportsmen through physical fitness management during COVID pandemic. Before starting the talk, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to late Professor Dr. M. Sudhakar Shetty, who is the very reason why I am standing here. So, coming to the introduction, as all of you know, sport is a major contributor to economic and social development. The role is well recognized by governments, including in the political declaration of the 2030 Agenda, which states that contribution sports make to the empowerment of women and young people, individual and communities, as well as health, education and social inclusion objectives. Now I will deal with COVID-19, how is it posed threat to sporting industry, uh, sporting uh, activities and how is it causing threat to the athletes. Uh, most of the top, most of my talk had been made easier by uh, Dr. Sony John by covering most of the things. So it is easier for me to go ahead here. So COVID-19 posed threat to both sporting world and physical activity and well-being. Sport, uh, what now people have done is uh, using sport education, which fosters the physical fitness, mental well-being, social attitudes and behavior while populations are locked down. International rights. Is my slides visible? Yes, sir. Just make it full screen, sir. Hello. On behalf of uh, Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka chapter, yes, all the participants for sitting live in this event for today. We are having uh, two wonderful sessions. Uh, one session by Dr. Sony sir, and the second is uh, Dr. Akshay Shetty who is doing this session. And, uh, and now Akshay Shetty sir will resume with this session. Akshay sir, you can go ahead sir. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Just give me a minute. And uh, this is for the kind information of all the participants. Uh, the program will be available on the YouTube 
people those who have missed out this program can view it on uh, YouTube on the same channel. And at the end of the program, we'll be giving the uh, instructions for the feedback link and other things. So can you be tuned and uh, over to Abhishek. Sir. The impact of COVID-19 on sporting events. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. Impact of COVID-19 on sporting events. Most of the major sporting event has been cancelled or postponed or played behind back doors. Most of them have been cancelled or postponed in the view of keeping the maintaining the health of the athletes and have been played behind closed door in view of maintaining the health of the fans. Olympics and para Paralympics have been postponed for the first time in the history of modern games. Uh, so how COVID-19 has affecting the professional athletes? Uh, these professional athletes are under tremendous pressure to re reschedule their training. As Sony John sir rightly said, because gymnastic, gym is closed, auditorium is closed, sports facilities, sports stadiums are closed. They are finding it difficult to train. And most of them are at the risk of losing professional sponsors who may not support them as initially agreed. No. Most important thing, what I see in my day to day uh, practice now is they are prone for injuries. That is because of long gap without proper warm up and proper conditioning. So most common type of injuries what we see is uh, slap tires in the shoulder and hamstring strain. Are the most common type of injury so uh, all the athletes who are getting back to sports immediately most important thing is conditioning proper warm-up retraining and then get back to the sports so how how did it how the how how did covid 19 impact the revenues of sport industries so according to the covid 19 sport physical activity and well-being and its effects published that uh, uh, sports programs uh, has been hit by 23 percent that is 171 us billion dollars sports retail has been uh, hit max maximum that is 36 percent which is 270 us billion dollars clubs and gym fees have also been hit by 15 percent that is overall 115 us billion dollars and infrastructure food beverage and betting has been reduced by 26 percent that is 200 us billion dollars so this data is from the us not from india so impact of covid 19 and how does this covid 19 affect the physical inactive and during the covid 19 this physical inactivity how does it affect on the musculoskeletal system Usually when this uh, skeletal muscle contracts which increases the demand which poses major challenge for the body hemostasis provoking a plethora of response in several organs uh, in order to support the energy demands of the working muscle fiber temporary acute responses occur in our organ to meet physical activity and exercise challenge so can physical fitness protect or attenuate the consequences of infection during quarantine most of the uh, most of us will go to a depression and traumatic disorders which can be prevented or the consequences of this can be reduced by sporting activities or maintaining physical fitness so inflammatory process generated by reactive oxygen species can be more effectively detoxified by antioxidant system in various organs so what what does this mean is our uh, our organs are capable of detoxifying the inflammatory processes which have which occur during the disease uh, so in uh, well trained individuals who are trained by exercises the brain itself can detoxify the and de detoxify the uh, inflammatory processes so uh, exercise induced diphtheria is associated with the release of endogenous opioids so this concludes that the regular exercise can attenuate the symptoms and consequences of quarantine induced depression and traumatic disorder so i will uh, briefly explain this in a chart so it is too much medical i have not gone in detail but 
it is just scientifically proving that how exercises help in reducing the consequences so basically in case of infection body has its own defense mechanism so this anti inflammatory process antioxidant defense learning and memory neurotrophic factors endorphins immune system neurogenesis all this are the defense mechanism of the body so during quarantine usually normal people go to depression and all this defense mechanism gradually uh, decreases so it worsens the disease so whereas a person who's physically fit actively training all this markers increases and thus reduce depression it is a cycle so basically a trained individual can face the disease better and has less clinical signs and symptoms of the disease so who with with central disease of control cdc has guidelines for both uh, adults and children that is 30 minutes of exercises for adults and 60 minutes for children so now most of uh, most common question what i get during this uh, covid is like uh, how much exercises to do we do how 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 fit should we how much should we strain ourselves so there's a there's a chart which on the top chart which has immune stimulation and immune suppression on the left hand side so immune stimulation is good immune suppression is bad so when you do a moderate intensity exercise it will just stimulate the immune system there is no immune suppression which is very good so when you do a intense exercise immune stimulation also is high but there is a open window phase where there is a immune suppression during this phase chances of uh, sign symptoms of the disease might worsen so intense exercise is not advisable but yeah moderate intensity exercises is advised advisable so sars uh, covid 19 most commonly affects the upper respiratory in fact uh, upper respiratory tract so this the second chart which shows uh, how 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 is it affecting so in moderate intensity exercise the signs and symptoms of a disease is below average al always whereas in a sedentary person who doesn't do any exercise signs and symptoms most of the times are above average intense exercise it may vary from below average to above average so now during covid they have we have categorized each sport and activity based on the risk that is low risk medium risk and high risk so low risk is exercise at home alone or with shared household members with own and sanitized equipment medium risk is exercise at public alone or with shared household members no more than 5 people with own and sanitized equipment high risk is group exercise with non household members in private or public not physically distant with shared equipment so this is a vicious cycle where when you are in a active society your systems are active environment is active people is active everyone is active which is good vice versa also can happen if you are not active all this are interconnected so coming to my since my topic is on confidence building so i thought i will go in the depth of optimal confidence lack of confidence and poor confidence so what is optimal confidence optimal confidence involves being so convinced that you will achieve your goals that you strive hard to do so so this is uh, this is seen in uh, elite athletes elite athletes this is the one thing which makes them elite from the other athletes they have their optimal confidence so as this picture says if you believe in yourself anything is possible so that is what is optimal confidence coming to lack of confidence lack of confidence or self doubt create anxiety break concentration and causes indecisiveness so i wanted to go in depth because most of the athletes at some point of time will go through this phase so when i was doing research on this i got a beautiful letter uh, written by liverpool manager to a young fan who was going from uh, going through a anxiety disease anxiety issues 
so he was a uh, liverpool manager urgen klopp was kind enough to reply to that so i just took that letter and put it here so i will read the letter and then i will tell you why i put it here so uh, it's a letter by urgen klopp to a young fan suffering from anxiety so he starts saying that hello lewis can i start by telling you a secret i get nervous to be totally honest i would be worried if i did not get nervous because when it happens it gives me the chance to turn that energy into something positive i know it might be strange for a boy of your age to think that the liverpool manager can feel the way that you do but i do from your letter it is very clear that you are very thoughtful and also very caring and when you have this qualities it is very hard to avoid getting nervous you asked me what i do when my players feel this way and the answer is simple i remind them of how important they are to me and how much i believe in them and i have no doubt that it will be exactly the same for your family with you as you know i lost more than few finals and this isn't a good feeling but with the help of my family and friends i kept going and in the end we were able to enjoy some really good times if i had dwelled on the bad moments i know that this would be would not have been possible so please be positive about yourself and look forward to the brilliant time i know you will have growing up so why i put this letter is first of all he states that this issue is common and everyone will go through secondly what he says that he uh, he also tells that it is a good thing because because of this negative energy you have to make sure that this negative energy is transformed into a positive energy third thing what he encourages is to speak up speak up if you are going through this you have to speak up maybe to your friends family your coach fourth thing what he says is believe in yourself and you will always come through this if you believe in yourself and speak up so this athletes who are going through this issue should always open up to the coach and it will be the coach's responsibility to find out if if athlete doesn't open up if there is any issues so so many times uh, mr bb thomas have come to me in fc mangalore and he has told me that uh, this player has potential but he is not performing he is always complaining of this or that so then i when i after examining i found out that there was no issues it was just that anxiety issues which they were going through so in this letter what he clearly states that is speaking up about the issue to your family friends coach anyone will definitely help you get out of this now coming to over confidence which is the dreaded thing any athlete uh, will have if if it if he has it it is going to only destroy his career false confidence causes you to prepare less than you need to in order to perform most of the time it used to happen for us during exams so as norin famously quoted over confidence will drown you in the sea of reality so i went through two articles where about self confidence which is most important for a athlete to have in himself so valley and knight in 2002 they mentioned that confident about one's ability to execute physical skills use psychological skills employ perceptual skills which is that making good decisions be fit and highly trained and improve on one skill you can always learn you keep learning which will always definitely improve this is this will build your self confidence and uh, as i as i stated earlier about elite athletes this hayes menard thomas and borden in 2007 they made a questionnaire and almost all the athletes and they found this strange thing that all these elite athletes had self confidence uh about the other athletes their belief in they had their belief in their ability to achieve as well as their belief in their superiority over the opposition so one thing most of the athletes you should be uh, knowing is that the self confidence is the thing which separates the all the other athletes from these elite athletes now coming to steps to help your athlete be more confident first thing is you should let go of fear 
now let go of fear here i don't state about physical harm which is causing while playing athletes are not, most of them most of the time they're not worried about getting injured but their fear is how important is the game to me how will my performance affect the team uh, whether i will be able to achieve what i want they have this fear they should let go this fear to be more confident second thing is play freely instead of holding back so what i mean but mean here play freely instead of holding back as in like when 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 any team which trains or an athlete who trains lot of aspects lot of as sony john said lot of video analysis imagining everything goes on in training but if you try to imply that while playing and if you keep thinking about that you would not be able to play freely so this will hamper your performance when you are performing on the field uh, keep your mind clear and just perform focus on self not others no comparison this is the most important thing which every athlete should uh, take into account just uh, every athlete will be talented in their own way they each person will individually be talented in one or the other way you cannot compare yourself to others so this is the most uh, intimidating thing for a athlete to reduce his perform if he starts comparing himself to others play for yourself not others so most of us when we play we will accept our coach to appreciate or our fellows to tell that we have played well so we play for that that is in a way good but not always always try playing for yourself don't play for appreciation from the others you do the best on the field appreciation will naturally follow play functionally don't try to be perfect this uh, i mean i was thinking what example can i give for this play functionally don't try to be perfect first thing what came to my mind is virender sevag and his footwork don't get me wrong he is my favorite opening batsman so his footwork if you go by the coaching manual of the uh, of cricket he never had that front foot going nowhere to the ball but his hand eye coordination was very good so if something works for you go with that it will always uh, you don't have to perfect the thing if perfect on anything if it is working for you last is focus on the process not result which i always keep telling which i after doing lot of research even i realized the mistake we always when we play we think about how do we win whether we will win whether we will lose i think it is it is while playing if we keep thinking on that it is just going to hamper our uh, game you should just live at the moment you should play for that moment and uh, success generally follows if you focus on the process so confidence is key uh, studies have shown that exercise protect against deadly covid complication research already suggests so now how to rebuild confidence during covid so this is a difficult scenario for everyone so firstly stay active and focused draw draw a plan for yourself direct your time and energy towards individual fitness goals overall well being structure it into your daily life get get outdoor for solo runs or jogs work with your coach determine sport specific skills like maybe if you are lacking at particular skill you work with your coach and improve on that because now you have lot of time for yourself you can train on what you are lacking and drills that you can adapt from home many online uh, platforms have reduced their membership fees or waived off the membership fees you can make use of it and you can develop your own skills keep learning so most important thing here for a athlete is to be injury free so this time you can use it to be injury free how 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 do we do this take a uh, time from your now since you have lot of time do on flexibility range of motion exercises from yoga to foam rolling and static stretching for strengthening outside the gym like uh, body weight exercises like squats uh, 
core strengthening exercises push ups pull ups all these things you can do participate in home programs prevented to for uh, basically mostly for for all this football basketball volleyball people you can try on uh, like an acl injury prevention program or cervical spine strengthening program all these things can be done right now now what are my take home messages from this talk is stay active always which even research suggests that it is helping coping with stress in a healthy way will make you the people you care about and your community stronger improving our mental health hygiene helps us create a new normal for mental well being in the future mental health is going to be a big issue because of this covid once it gets sound uh, i hope people get back to normal as soon as possible establish other healthy habits and stay connected share your feelings if you are depressed or anxious please speak up it is going to just going to help you um and most important message what i would like to give to all the athletes is after long gap you are all going to play once once everything starts as even the uh, vice chancellor honorable vice chancellor just said that he is planning to start the sporting activities so just make sure that you are conditioned you do proper weight training do proper warm up and please get back to field don't just rush to field after long gap because you will be prone to injuries so i would like to end my talk on uh, on a famous quote by my favorite person uh, former president today is being his birthday what he said is all of us do not have equal talent but all of us have an equal opportunity to develop our talents these are my references written to sports with confidence thank you so many of you are in the sense of positive or a primary contact center and the building saying and the this okay sir Abhishek, are you going for it or? Yeah, if you, I, I can go for it. Yep. So basically, when you train, uh, heartbeat cannot be controlled. But uh, usually, athletes' heartbeats are comparatively low because uh, because of their training. So it's not under our control. If heartbeat, I mean, ideally, when when in the gyms they say that you have to increase your heartbeat to certain level to lose. If you are going to lose, if you would. Wait, if you're going to train for weight loss program, then your heartbeat should go up. Don't worry about your heartbeat. So that is not under our control. It is good if it goes up. And usually, athletes have lower heartbeats. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question, I think, I think uh, it would be to John, sir. 
uh, yep. any any guidance to find out when the athletes reach beyond the optimal stress level any guidance to find out when no, the this athletes is, reach uh, beyond you know, the optimal uh, stress level yeah i understand that question but this is pretty much individualistic and uh, we cannot just uh, uh, bring out a generic uh, standard for this because every individual is different so the individual himself or herself will have to observe introspect and observe and find out the point find out the threshold of stress and over stress and if i work with an athlete probably i'll be able to understand that the way the athlete respond to the the way the athlete responds to different situations when it comes to performance but otherwise to give a general standard of uh, identifying the overstress is probably not possible and to add to the last question actually abhishek right rightly answered that question there is one point that probably you can always do Uh, regarding uh, you know our trade is getting the right feedback when you do exercise and observe the way the heartbeat is going that is the only way probably that you can do and trying to reduce heartbeat as he said rightly you know you shouldn't be worried about heart rate why should you be worried about heart rate because uh, it'll go up anyway it'll go up when you do exercise but if you have a mechanism something like a monitor or something then you can um, take the right feedback from the heartbeat and observe it all the way and see that you're not getting a kind of a standard heartbeat when you do a workout and it doesn't go beyond that that is one one way that you can observe and you shouldn't try to keep it down or something of that sort you don't have to actually because when you do exercise as he said you know the heart heart rate is likely to go up and because of the better stop volume your resting heart rate will be less and that is a mark of your fitness if you can observe your resting pulse rate uh, when you get up in the morning if you can get your heart rate and all that that marks the resting pulse rate which is which can be used as a uh, mark of your physical fitness that's it thank you uh, thank you sir uh, there is uh, one more question Yep. Does outdoor outdoor recreation boost recovery and resilience? Uh, you know, I, I'm a man always always in for out outdoor recreation. Actually, uh, I like going out, and that has got a lot of advantages because it gives you a lot of uh, natural uh, air and uh, opportunity to interact with the environment. But then the question now is. that how far you can go and interact with the nature because the pandemic is on high so uh i like going out and that i i believe that it has got certain special effect on you when you go out and work but then uh, this period is not suitable for that so uh you know if you can go out and work very safely that is the best thing that you can do actually and it has got certain advantages as i said before that you get fresh air you are open to the environment and you can interact with the environment that gives you a far fresher outlook no doubt about it but if you confine home and do it it has got certain limitations like you know uh, you have to be in the room and do some exercise and all that you're you're not going out and you get less less fresh air when you are in the room so that is a disadvantage probably right thank you thank you sir and i think uh, one more question to dr abhishek shetty uh, sir there is uh, there is one question uh, does uh, this reduction of uh, body weight affect on the function of functioning of the heart no so you need to unmute sir yes sir yeah yeah can you repeat the question please yeah the question is Uh, does reduction of body weight affect on the functioning of the heart yeah actually the basic question is if you reduce your body weight when you are when you are obese it will generally affect the functioning of all the organs it's not only heart but at what when are you reducing your weight if you are uh, malnourished and if you still try to reduce then it is not going to improve your functions if you are obese definitely when you get physically fit all your organs will improve functioning 
functioning of the organs will improve but it cannot be put generally that when you reduce the body weight will it affect because if you are malnourished and if you still reduce it is definitely not going to uh, help your heart by any way thank you thank you dr abhishek sir and this is one last question from my side just to add on to the previous question uh, what is your suggestion to people who are crazed on losing weight and uh, who maintain an improper graph that is once the weight is reduced again they go back to the normal way of life again they consume uh, uh, inadequately again they put on weight again they come down and reduce so how will this uh, uh, exactly affect on the functioning of the heart and other body systems so uh, yeah that's a brilliant question which i always address many people keep asking me this i think this is the podium to answer that so the first first and foremost thing is it is not only physical exercise it is also diet physical exercise and diet your healthy lifestyle which will help you reduce your weight if you do both simultaneously then uh, then this this is a good way to lose uh, weight and it will definitely improve the function of all the organs but they, you see but people suddenly go dieting severe dieting for like severe calorie deficit may go eat around 300 400 calories per day when your requirement is 2000 and they lose around 20 kg in a month which is not good which definitely once they will start craving for their all the food and they will put on the weight back so this is not not only going to do any good for them it is also affecting their all the organs and everything so what i would suggest is gradually lose weight with physical exercises and diet so with the healthy eating and working out it is definitely good for everything rather than going on a specific diet and not main, not doing physical activity which is not going to last for last for thank you sir yes. uh, okay shrikant yes sir yes sir uh, can, can i get a minute to uh, sp spotlight on some of the aspects uh, abhishek uh, spoke yes, on ima imagery yes, right yes, because that can clarify a lot of things because uh, yeah i was advising imagery and uh, video modeling during the time of covid uh, for preparing and abhishek rightly said that it is not possible to imagine while playing while playing or while doing something it is and that is not right also to imagine because uh when you are playing when you are playing your brain is predominantly occupied by the motor regime not the cognitive regime right imagery is a cognitive activity it's a covert and cognitive activity whereas performance on the field is not a uh, not a covert activity it's, it's an overt activity and when you perform when you are running when you are playing football when you are batting when you are bowling when you are fielding you are brain is predominantly occupied by the motor domain of the brain not by the cognitive domain of the brain and if you start imagining your rhythm is going to get lost you shouldn't do imagery while playing but you can use imagery prior to playing to prepare yourself to to learn motor skills to visualize and rehearsal prior to performance not during performance is right about it and even video modeling the same thing how would avoid doing that video modeling during while playing because you get all the feedback these days on the big screens and if you look at it the problem is that the moment you look at it you start thinking about it you start thinking about it when you start thinking about it you are activating your cognitive domain which will naturally hinder the rhythm of your performance so i always ask my athletes don't look at the feedback video feedback just leave it that's it and then now we have developed Uh, for your knowledge we have developed certain imagery strategies whereby we can use it even while playing even while playing because i hope you remember uh, me telling that imagery is not only visualizing it includes all the sensory modalities so we have developed certain certain methods imagery methods that we can use that we can use even while playing because we now know that cerebral has got cognitive abilities lesson studies have got evidence 
stating that cerebellum has got cognitive powers and a particular type of cognitive powers and we have developed imaginary programs that is suitable for uh, so that it can be performed by this cerebellum while you are moving and we have found that it is really good actually it is contributing really good towards better performance all right that's a clarification thanks for touching on that abhishek abhishek on that point like you cannot you. do imagery while playing that's right you are right about it thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. And, thank uh, you sir. and uh, one, last, one last punchline from you sir how much importance is physical fitness uh, during this covid period is it for me how in, yes sir it's to dr abhishek sir. Yeah. as as i rightly showed you the graph in my presentation in moderate exercises is very good it is even proved in the report saying that people who do moderate exercises their uh, immune stimulation is too good and their body mechanism body defense mechanism to fight the disease is very good they don't have any uh, they have very below average symptoms compared to the normal person sedentary person but yeah whereas intense physical activity has a window period following your intense workout you will have drained all your energy and that point of time there are chances which where you might acquire some symptoms of this so when person who is doing a intense training has a chance of acquiring below average to above average symptoms but who is doing moderate exercises actually has a very less chance of having severe symptoms of this disease thank you sir and uh, for kind information of all the organizers and other things and uh, today's event has been watched by around 3179 people we have got this many views for today okay. and i think it will be available on the youtube and uh, it can be used as a therapeutic uh, uh, session uh, for all the viewers and uh, for the future viewers also and uh, and now i request uh, shilpa madam to kindly take over and thank you dr abhishek sir and uh, dr john sir thank you thank, thank you, you thank you thank, thank you. you thanks a lot thank you and uh, for uh, for all the viewers i think uh, uh, the feedback form will be available on the youtube channel behind uh, below the comments column so all those who are registered can download your certificates from the youtube channel below the comments column on the same program thank you and over to shilpa ma'am thank you dr sohil sir and dr abhishek shetty sir for the wonderful clarification to questions posted by participants thank you sir i feel here everyone knows shrikant sir now i'll give a brief introduction about shrikant sir he is the all rounder in fact he is the person who motivated us to organize this webinar and stood with us being the backbone he is the nodal officer department of collegiate education and also physical education director of gpg gfgc care puram bangalore he has more than 19 years of teaching training experience in the field of sports moreover he is a gold medalist in mpa at bangalore university he has delivered more than 15 lectures as resource person orientation and the induction program organized by various higher education and institution he presented more than 30 research paper in national and international conferences basically he is a good national athlete who won numerous medals and also an active member in sports board bangalore university now i request to give valid actor address or to sir Uh, all the information regarding this yes. 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 ABCT Memorial Institute of Dental Sciences, Nitted into the University and Physical Education Foundation of India. We would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Satish Kumar. and professor dr krishna nayak us principal and dean abcd memorial institute of dental sciences to your encouragement for the successful of this program 
Thank you, sir. And a big thanks to our resource persons, Dr. Sarnikon and Dr. Abhishek to their efforts towards presentation. Thank you, Sarnikon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I also accept my thanks to Dr. Murli Krishnan, his advisor in the University, Dr. Rahul Bandari, sports advisor, A.B. Shetty Memorial Institute of Dental Sciences, and Mr. Shrikan, Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka Chapter, for your enormous cooperation in the organization of this event. Thank you. And I would like to express my gratitude to technical committee member, and all the participants, and everybody. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, sir. Thank you.